Hello and welcome to the Seed Group Podcast. I'm Carla. I'm Norman. <laughs> yep, that's it. And I'm Albert. And if you need any of our musical services, please call 708-351-0333. And we would be remiss if we did not recognize our wonderful, amazing, fantastical producer, Marcus. Yeah. Hello, Marcus. Hi, Marcus. Yeah. All right, Marcus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And tonight we have a special guest, a beautiful young lady, renowned singer, an author, and all kinds of good stuff. And and guess what? You're still looking good, girl. Holly the Max is well. Yes, ma'am. Yay! Hey. I've been bragging so much about you. Carla said she said, "Oh no, we got to talk to her." I said, "Oh, she yes. wrote a book." I can't say what she wrote the book about, but you well, know, can we? Can we? we? Can't say. Can, can we? We can say because she wrote the book. It's for sale, right? It's for yes, sale. it is. We and can say. Who's it? it yeah. Who's it about and why? I want to. It's know. about Ike Turner. Yeah, free base ain't, ain't free. Woo -hoo. It's the, about Ike Turner and it's how they lied on him. Oh, look out! Mm. Yeah, uh, um, he wasn't like that. He wasn't. No, because he had hit me when he got shot in the toe. That's what I told him. I told him. <laughs> no. Um, How'd you uh, wind up working with Ike? Say, what, baby? Wind up working with Ike. What were you doing? How did that wind up? Uh-huh. Y'all ain't got all you. Well, most, I'm, but I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring it down. Narrow down. When I was 14 years old, you know, I was singing opera. My yep. mom was had me singing opera. Uh -huh. And uh uh I saw Ike on TV and, and I was 14 and I told my mom, I said, Oh, that's what I need. And my mom looked at me and said, Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then later on that evening, mm -hmm. she put uh an album on by Jimmy Smith, who is now still the greatest jazz organist in the world. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I told her, I said, Mom, I'm going to sing with him. Anyway, fast forward. In 1977, I met Ike. That's uh, it's such a story, man. It's a story. I met Ike, and I went to his studio in 1977. I went to Jimmy Smith's club, and I cannot tell you how I got on the stage. At Jimmy's club. Right now, I can't tell you. It was a blur. It, I blanked out. <laughs> and I went from the bar to the stage. I look up. I'm in front of the audience. This is God's truth. Jimmy hit the audience, the, the organ. Blam! What you doing? I turn around. I'm singing. What you doing? <laughs> I'm playing the organ. I said, well, keep on playing. I'm going to keep on singing. And his wife told me, you're hired. That's, that's what happened with Jimmy yeah. Smith. Yeah. Now, after that, I went home, and this girl, her name was Joan. Mm -hmm. She said, girl, you got to come up here to the studio. I said, no, I'm not coming down with because I just got a job with Jim Smith. I'm singing with Jim Smith. She said, please, Holly, don't embarrass me. I told this man how you could sing. I said, I'm not coming. She said, please come. I said, who is it? She said, I turned it. I sat straight up in the bed. <laughs> I sat straight up in bed. I said, okay, I'm coming. She said, no, we're going to sit in the limo for you. I said, no, I'm getting on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Anyway, in LA at back then, it took you two and a half hours to get anywhere on the bus. You hear me? It probably still does. Thank you. No, we well, know they got a train now. <laughs> 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 yeah, they got a train now. They got a subway and all that. But I went to the back door, and when I got inside, uh, Albert, I sat on the floor and cried like somebody had beat me because I stole something. Was I was like, just so happy. Yeah. Oh, you can't imagine. Tears just came. <laughs> All of a sudden, something went past me. I felt the wind going past me. And Joan was saying, what's the matter? What's the matter? I said, I told my mama when I was 14 years old that he was what I needed. And he I am. And I told my mama, I'll go save just that. And I did that. Uh. 
<laughs> and Joe, Joe say, shh, hush, 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 hush. So finally this voice came out of nowhere. I didn't know anything about intercom systems. Mm -hmm. Uh uh and he said, Oh, uh, 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 uh what, what's wrong with that girl? She said she said she just happened. Oh, too much happened. <laughs> he said, Anyway, that's how I met Uh-huh. Cool. Because you even filled in for uh, Tina a couple of times, didn't you? No. I, uh, no. Uh, I, 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 when she left, I took her place. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. But you also, you wrote a song for Bobby Bland's? Yes. Bobby, uh, Bobby Bland's, Bland's 19, yep, 1978 album, Comply <laughs> With Me. Tell us about yeah. that. Well, that's the only gospel song he's ever sang in his life. I and and I I uh Monk Higgins was the producer on that on that uh, album. I remember that. And Al Bell, he still ain't gave me my money. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Y'all don't if you don't want the real, don't interview me. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. I'm enjoying it. I ain't seen you in so long, it's been a shame. Yeah, I, I know. I was living at Linda's. We did the Blues Fest again. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, remember okay. we did it with Elroy, the fantastic. Yeah, with Elroy. Yeah, back in 1902. Yes, that was nice. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person that, you know, a lot of times people want me to sugarcoat things. I'm not. I don't sugarcoat anything because you have to. Let people know yes. the 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 downside of entertainment. You know, you got a lot of kids, sure. and they, and they look they look up the stars and they they oh I want to do that, but I make sure the children, honest to God, in my heart, I make sure the children know. Guess what? Make sure that you're willing to go through whatever other than selling your soul now. Thank you. you got that right. Guess what? You don't sell your soul. You don't sell your body. You don't sell out. Mm -hmm. Guess what? But it's a rough business. It's a rough business. Mm -hmm. And I've seen so many that they, they fall to drugs. They fall to uh, 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 getting broke. They fall. You know, it, 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 it's a dirty business. It's a dirty business. And if you don't have somebody in your corner that really care about you, mm -hmm. it gets dirtier. Yeah. And that's the straight up truth. But y'all didn't ask me that. Y'all asked me something else. And I went to the left. You didn't no, no, no. <laughs> that, that, actually, yeah. that actually leads up to a question I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah baby. How has the music business changed for the better? For It's worse. It's worse. You know, we are still getting cheated. Mm -hmm. Okay, guess what? Uh, um, white people have taken over the blues. Yeah, mm -hmm. I noticed. Okay, now, when I leave here, and Alvin, when you leave here, there is this not going to be any, any remains of us. Because I had a white boy tell me, he's 20 years old. He say, "Oh, I know all about the blues. I looked at him one day. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do, don't you? I said, you what? Oh, I know all about the blues. Guess what? I've been playing the blues since I was five years old. Baby, I'm 76 years old. What is you talking about? <laughs> what is you? And I almost went there, but I contained myself. But that is, that's how they feel. They feel like they own the blues. You know, and that's why it's important to keep legacies alive, to keep the history of the blues alive, keep the legacy alive, and that's why there are people that have dug in deep to make sure that happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm working on now putting out in Bronzeville. Oh, I'm working okay. now in trying to get funded to put a museum together. Oh, okay. Um, uh oh. We have a you froze. 
bring into Bronzefield a an entity that will help these kids yes. learn how to deal with the music business, how to learn how to deal with themselves in the music business. It's gonna take a minute. It's gonna take a minute, but you know that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. You know, you know, Parker had a blues museum because he had all kind of artifacts. I don't know if it's still around or not. Who, baby? Parker. I forgot his first name, but he was a guitar player that did a lot of stuff. But his stuff was mainly was in the downtown area. Parker. Parker. Yeah, I Parker. forgot. I, I forgot his first name. You know Light that? brown skin guy. Yeah. Yeah. He used to be a, not the one. He used to be a policeman. No, that's Jay. That's Jay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. We keep in touch. Okay. All right. So I gotta get back down to Linda's too. Yeah, uh I went down there about a couple of months ago. Oh. But since I saw you, you know, I had a car wreck. I wrecked my truck. No, you uh, yeah, I wrecked my truck, tried to kill myself and said, Jesus, take the wheel, because I know I don't know what I'm doing in this situation. <laughs> you know? Don't Say what? You're not ready to go nowhere yet. Don't do that. Oh, I was ready to go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. I was ready to go because uh, I just said, take the wheel. I say, I mean, I said it out loud. Just take the wheel. I don't know what I'm doing in this situation. Whatever you decide, I'm okay. And I just let people go wherever, wherever. <laughs> <I live. laughs> and they told me. They had they honest to God that the paramedics told me if I hadn't relaxed like that, I would have been dead. Yeah. yeah, and that's what makes it different. Yep. People don't realize that you don't freeze, you relax. Right. Yeah. That's um, right. You know, and and that's what I did. Huh? Obviously it wasn't yeah. your time. Yeah. No, guess what? I'm gonna be around the worst people for a long time. Thank yeah. you. Get them. Yeah, Get you them, you you have yeah, you have so much to teach the young people. You have so much to give and to offer and to guide. So yeah, of course not. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm thankful. Believe me, I am thankful for that. Uh, all of, all that I have, honey, I, I, I'm so thankful for it. You can't imagine how thankful I am. Yeah. How grateful I am. You know, when, when uh, I came back here, uh, you know, I lived in Paris. I from 95 until 2007, on and on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was part owner of a nightclub there called Maxwell Cafe. Bingo. And that's another story. That's that, that's that's a miraculous story. See, but my life has just been a miracle. You know, that's why I say I'm so grateful, you know. But anyway, that's another story. But my point is, I love when I came back in 2007, I was accused of abusing my mother. That was a lie, cause I knew. Yeah, I that's knew, right. I know God go well. You didn't do that. That's right. Anyway, and I just want you and and everybody else to know, baby, I was homeless eating out of garbage cans oh. because uh huh because the state had accused me and they took everything from me. They took everything. Eh, I mean, when I say everything, lawyers, the state, the judge. The nursing home, they took everything from me. And I ended up uh, being homeless and eating out of garbage cans. But you know what? They When they cut me loose, February uh, 2009, I turned around and went did the blues, Chicago Blues Festival in 2009. Yeah. And I ain't looked back. Yeah. I ain't looked back. And can I tell you something? They will never get me again because I'm on a mission. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. I'm on a mission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what what the, what that what the blues was? I'm on a mission from God, baby. There you there go. go. <laughs> you hear me? Uh, uh, I I I do not bite my tongue. Mm -hmm. I do not whimp. I do not back up. If you're not right, I'm gonna tell you you're not right, and it's gonna get right. That's the way I am because nobody understands when you go through that, what I went through. Mm -hmm. And I love my mother. I've been around the world three times, baby. And the second time I took her, making sure she saw something. So I don't have no regrets, none. 
Well, I even took my mom to an after hour joint. He and me, everybody got busted. <laughs> I ain't got no comment because I remember being in the club down in Linda's a couple of times. <laughs> That's right. That's right. She went everywhere with me. I take her. I take her everywhere with me because my mother, my mother enjoyed watching her daughter. Yes. She enjoyed watching me flourish. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And. A lot of my stage outfits and my street outfits, my oh, mama made them. I just told her about one of the outfits she wore, and I was telling somebody they went uh, for real. I said, "Oh yeah, she was right out of Paris at the time, and she was hot." <laughs> yeah, guess what, man? You know, and I didn't give a damn about being butt naked. Thank you. I, I told him that. I told him. Nobody believed me. I said, "I wish I had pictures of that." Trust me, that outfit was something else. Yeah, my, yeah, that, my mom. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> my mom and I and I pay I pay tribute to her yeah. in every interview because when you have a mother that's supportive like that, mm -hmm. you understand you you yeah. she's not here but I pay I pay tribute to her as long as I live. Mm -hmm. I think the first time my mom heard me play at a blues fest down in uh, Florence, Alabama, it mm -hmm. took, uh, between her and my uncle, they would stand up on the table yelling. And I laughed. I said, "Boy, you talking about a good feeling?" Having Guess life. what? When 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 your relatives and your parents are proud of you, baby, it just makes you feel so good. Make you play. You make know, you play more. You Ooh. know what? It it. I don't care. Like uh, when my family came, like when I did an opera uh, opera performance, and my family mm -hmm. was there. I don't care. All the standing ovations. Nothing meant anything but their that's standing right. ovation. But that that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. The honest God, that's right. Yeah, and that's, something that's awesome. Right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your thought. No, 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 no. I was thinking about Lena McLean, Dr. Lena McLean. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. Dr. Mean, Lena McLean and my mother, uh, I'm the only black child that ever sang at the Lyric Opera House at 12 years old. Okay. At 12 years old, singing German, French, and Italian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, <laughs> here, we here we go. No. no, you know what? I tell the truth because people need to know the downfalls mm -hmm. and how you get up and dust yourself off. You understand? Yeah. What happened was my stepfather raped me, oh. and uh huh. And I was twelve years old, and my mama shot him, okay. and she was, and we down there at the Lyric Opera House. And I'm singing German, French, and Italian. Mama behind the curtain with handcuffs on. And I'm telling you what God does, baby. See, when you come, when you come through the storm, hallelujah. When you come through the storm, you don't got no shame. Guess what? You, 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 you shout, you, you're happy. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Tears was coming out of my eyes. My so mama got handcuffs, but I kept right on singing, baby. You hear me? I kept right on singing and finished that concert, but my opera career was over. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Because that was a trauma to me. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, that was a trauma to me. But I kept right on singing, baby, and didn't, and, didn't, and 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 would never stop. Would never stop singing. I didn't have no kids because I didn't want to stop singing. Plus the fact I don't like bad kids. I don't like stupid kids. I don't like dumb kids, and I don't like ugly kids. So I knew not to have no kids. Just keep all on singing. <laughs> you need some grandkids? I got a bunch of them. They're all cute. There you go. And guess what? Well, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> More power to you. <laughs> so, uh, so, like, you sing in four different languages, and... and mm -hmm. Yeah, can I contest that? Because I do the same. You sing in four different languages. You run the gamut of genres. Um, you're an award-winning, touring uh, mega diva. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. Yeah, love I love it. it. You know, and, as musicians, yeah, we appreciate all that. We definitely you know? do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh, I, I look back, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm just thankful. I'm so. I'm so deep I'm so deeply grateful to God that he gave me the talent that I have. Mm -hmm. And and then when you don't you know when <clears throat> when you lose one 
uh, uh, Al knows this, I think. I had a thyroid daughter operation. I remember that. Uh huh. And so that took my voice. My voice has changed. If you notice, it sounds a little rough now. Okay, but that's acid reflux that comes up. Okay. Well, then I ended up writing the book, see, about my life with uh, Ike Turner. And, and uh, then I turned around. Believe it or not, I'm I'm working on my life story documentary now. And right. that's what I was gonna say. It, it's there. It's that ready. It, it, it's there and needing and ready to come out. Yeah, yeah. That's that's next. And then this fall, I want to be the first black senior citizen woman in country music. There you oh, go. Nice. There you go. I mean, and 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 then <clears throat> and and finish my last book. You know, I'm writing another book. And then, then I'm gonna sit down. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna sit right. down and rest. And, now, and that book, that book, that book is that book is called uh, "All Kinds of Rape from Opera to the Blues." There you go. Wow! wow. Yeah, this it's gonna be deep. The title is already deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, I mean, country music. When you think about it like the Grand Old Opry, one of the founders was Black. Country music is steeped in Black history and tradition, and it's it's time for us to, you know, get back in the game. Well, well, what 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 they've done is they, they're now hip-hop country. Yeah, it, country country has changed dramatically. Yeah, you go to 99.5 and you think you're listening to uh, the B-O-N. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Because they've taken that, they they've taken that, and now, uh, uh, wow! I heard a song the other, the other day called uh, what name of that song is called "You Should Probably Leave." You should probably, babe. If this my boy didn't sound like Otis Redding, Whoa. quite country sing sound like Otis Redding. And they had that old gospel feeling behind it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, they did. The song is called, if you ever get a chance to listen to it, it's called You Should Probably Leave. Wow. Check it out. Yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the name of it. it. It's got that good old church church feeling and that groove. And he and he sounded like old oh, red somewhere. Some and and it's remarkable. It's just remarkable. Um, well, you know, uh, Holly, I just want to mention something right quick. Norman will probably deny this, but you know, his cousin, uh, Darius Rucker, is doing country music now. Guess what? I've been listening to Darius Rucker. Thank you. I With my, my, uh, my, Hootie and the Blue Flies. Something. What yeah. is Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I like Blue Flies better. <laughs> what did I say? Hootie and the Blue Flies. <laughs> yeah. Well, her problem with that is she's mm -hmm. not actually my cousin. That know. don't count. He don't know it. Did he? Don't tell him. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, cousin. <laughs> That's right. Guess what? Shoot. Right. Everybody claim. Everybody claim me, and I don't even know who the hell they are. <laughs> guess who one of my cousins is? We're gonna interview my baby, you. Sister Rose Blake is my cousin. Oh, is it? He looks just like my uncle, this doctor. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Well, we come in all shades, That's you know. Yeah. We're a crayon box. Yeah. Yeah. That, hey, get a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> what you got? Well, I want to say it's been a pleasure having you on. We have to have you back. I told him he was a live wire. So yeah. I this has been awesome. <laughs> this has been he. You did not lie. <laughs> this has been awesome. And Thank you. Yeah, and we thank you for joining yes, us. We're looking you. forward to having you back. Mm -hmm. yeah, you better have me back, cause baby, I got a, I got a whole lot to say. We got some oh, more. Yeah. We're going to get you back. Don't worry about it. Yeah, get me back, because I got a whole lot to say. Guess what? I, I can talk to y'all all year, and you never hear the same damn thing. Hey, <laughs> but I, I got a quick question. I know I know we had talked about this right quick. Didn't you have a program where you were trying to help other musicians with some stuff? Yeah, it's called Black Musicians Matter. Okay. I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. There you go. And that's a t-shirt. Cool. And it's in black. 
black. black musicians matter. Uh, this also got to do with the Brownsville thing I was talking about that I'm putting together. Where you know what? Uh, when when the pandemic hit, I was feeding musicians, mm -hmm. and I raised funds to pay their bills, baby. You know, because they wasn't working. And they, you know, it, it was a mess. You know what I'm saying? You know, and and that's when I got the idea that I need to try to get a grant to build a complex. Whereas, and you know, I think big. I don't think about the small stuff. A complex where we got a big, a big building, our own stage, our own little auditorium, little auditorium, maybe, maybe build to a big auditorium, but and offices, rehearsal rooms. Uh, if a, if a musician is bad on his luck, he got a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. He got a place to eat. You know that kind of stuff. All of that's in my head, and these are the things that. That quietly I'm working on. I'm working on quietly. Good. Well, if you need any help, we'd be more than happy to come and, you know. Okay. And the other thing is, you know, I'm always doing something strange. Always. I love you for that, too. <laughs> uh, I'm involved with the Royal Car Center. Guess what? Y'all better come get a car while I'm there. Where is that at? <laughs> 7301 Southwestern. Okay. Okay. Guess what? We I can put you in the car, paper, baby. Okay. We deal with good credit, bad credit, empty credit, uh, 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 stupid credit, and dumb credit. <laughs> <laughs> stupid credit. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds familiar too. Mm. <laughs> Say what? Sounds familiar. Yeah. Guess what? While I'm there, come and see. Come tell your friends. When I don't know. I don't know how long God can keep me there. You when understand? I but I'm there now, so whatever I can do for you, I will. Appreciate it. What hours are you there? Uh, ten to ten. To, uh, I'm sorry, that's a lie. Eleven to six, Mondays through Saturdays. Okay, okay. And yeah. We're gonna huh? Come to come so I'm gonna come see you. To come see you. Just killed this guy. Yeah, please. Yeah, please do because uh, I'm I'm in a position to help again, and. Oh, uh, you know that it, it, it's the older I get, the more opportunities I get to help people. I I just met a man. This is God's truth, and this is personal. But I got to take. I just met a man. He didn't have no teeth in his head. Uh oh. Uh huh. And he's been wanting to kiss me. Yes. And I told him, I said, a oh, baby, please. Uh uh. No, you, mm -mm. you go get you some teeth, sis. Because I don't like no man ain't got no teeth trying to kiss on me. You don't have That's exactly what I said. Do you know he went and got them teeth? I like Whoa. him. He really wanted to kiss, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he really wanted to kiss and still ain't got one. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. I'm sorry. I diverted. I'm sorry. No, 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 but my point is, he needed, God sent me to him, tell him about them damn teeth. Thank you. Tell him. He needed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guess what? Yeah, uh, uh, you don't care nothing about yourself. Thank you. Well, how you gonna care about me? Go get some teeth. Thank you. Tell her. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we we have enjoyed talking. You wish we could spend <laughs> it longer. That's why we have to bring you back. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us. I thank you all so much for having me. I really do. I'm it was glad a to see yeah. You. you look great. And it it has been a pleasure. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And to Thank all you all so much. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. God bless you guys. Oh, oh yeah, you the same. Thank you the same. And thank you, Seedlings, for joining us. And remember, if you are not a Seedling and want to be, what do we do? Like, yeah, no, no. Like. Subscribe, okay. like, share, and comment. And we will see you all next time on the Seed Group Podcast. And always remember, plant a seed and watch, watch it grow. Bye-bye. See you later, Holly. Bye-bye, you all. You God you. bless you. <laughs>